and now we have some practice problems. I'm going to work a few examples of some polynomial inequalities, some rational inequalities, and some absolute value inequalities. And first here we have a polynomial inequality. You see it's greater than zero. It's not an equal sign. And this is a polynomial. This is a cubic. You can see these three x's multiplied together would give us an x cubed if we worked all that out. And this is in factored form. And I'm going to show you the standard textbook approach to solving this, uh, which is a bit tedious in my opinion. And then I'll also show you a more efficient way to think about it graphically. Okay, but first the standard approach. The zeros here, if we think of this, this polynomial right here as a function, we could think of f of x as equal to this, x plus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 7. And we can find the zeros pretty easily, especially because it's already in factored form. The zeros are at negative 2, positive 3, and positive 7. And if we draw a number line and mark those points, negative 2, 3, and 7, that divides the number line into 1, 2, 3, 4 regions. And we're going to consider each of these factors in each of those regions and see whether each of those factors will be positive or negative in each of those regions. Okay, so let's make a chart here. So I'm going to draw some lines here and set up a chart like this. And here's what I'm doing. I'm going to look first at, at x plus 2. So let's write x plus 2 over here and then I'll take a look at x minus 3 and then x minus 7 and I'm going to consider this region of the number line where x is less than negative 2 and I'm going to write a number in here or not a number just write a positive or negative sign in each of those places to indicate whether this factor x plus 2 x plus 2 right here is positive or negative for these x values and you should be able to see that if x is less than negative 2 then x plus 2 will be negative so let's put a negative sign right there and x minus 3 will also be negative and x minus 7 will also be negative so that means for any of these x values along here any numbers on that part of the number line we will have a negative number times a negative number times a negative number those three factors will all be negative and you should realize that a negative number times a negative times a negative gives you a negative result so I write that down there so in this region for all of these x values, my polynomial is negative. Now let's think about the numbers between negative 2 and positive 3. Well, between negative 2 and positive 3, x plus 2 will be positive, and x minus 3 will be negative, and x minus 7 will be negative. So for any numbers, if, if x is any of these numbers in this region, we will be multiplying a positive number times a negative number times a negative number and that will give us a positive number so I write a plus down there now let's think about the numbers from 3 to 7 for all x values from 3 to 7 x plus 2 is positive x minus 3 is also positive but x minus 7 is negative in that region so if x is any of these numbers we will be multiplying when we work this out, we'll be multiplying a positive times a positive times a negative, which gives us a negative result. And then if x is greater than 7, all three of these factors will be positive. And so all three of those multiplied together will be positive. Now when we look at our original polynomial here, or our original problem, the question is, for what values of x is this greater than 0? So when you see greater than 0, think positive and it will be positive here and here in these regions so from from negative 2 to 3 and greater than 7 so you could draw your solution you could well I'll just use this number line right up here and I'll graph it like this from negative 2 to 3 and we use the parentheses because this is not a greater than or equal to all the numbers in between negative 2 and 3 not including negative 2 and 3 and then all the numbers greater than 7, not including 7. And if you wanted to write the answer algebraically, you could say n negative 2 
is less than x is less than 3, or x is greater than 7. All the numbers in this region or in this region will work, will satisfy the original equation. Okay, that's a, a good approach. It works every time. It gets you the answer. But this is a, a lot of thinking, a lot of steps, and it's fairly tedious. Here's another way to think about it. This original expression is a cubic, or if you write it as a function, that is a cubic function. And remember the shape of a cubic function looks something like this. And in this case, there are three real zeros. So we could draw an x-axis and imagine a cubic function doing something like this. And we know, because we know where these zeros are, we know that this crosses the axis at these points. This is negative 2, this is 3, and this is 7. Now imagine moving from left to right along this curve and part of the time the function is below the x-axis and part of the time it's above. And think below the x-axis is when f of x, our y value, the height of our function is negative, uh, and that's here and here. And when it's above the axis, then f of x is positive. Well, the original problem here is find the x's such that this function is greater than zero. So right here, greater than zero, think positive. Well, it's positive here and here. And look, that's for these x values, from 2 to 3, just like we had there, and greater than 7, just like we had there. And so you can see that on the graph. You can see that the function is positive, is greater than 0, when negative 2 is less than x is less than 3. So x is between negative 2 and 3, or when x is greater than 7. And so I think it's a lot quicker and easier to think about it this way than to work out all the plus and minus uh, positive and negative factors with the chart. And, uh, and I'll tell you why a lot of textbooks uh, do it this way. And that's because textbooks are often uh, dealing with some problems like this before they have discussed the shapes of polynomial functions. But I think it's okay to go ahead and mention this here because this is a pre-calculus class and you should have learned that a cubic has this character, characteristic shape back in Algebra 2. So I think it's okay to go ahead and use that concept to solve this problem in this very efficient manner.